take a look at us spinning the bucket over our head. Okay, so we have a bucket of water over our head here. It's full of water, half full of water, right? And you recognize there's some force of gravity pulling down on it, right? I'll just put it over here. Why doesn't it just fall on our head? Well, it is falling on our head. It's accelerating downward, but it's moving forward, right? And so it gets over here by the time it falls. And that's, I mean, that's really what this circular motion is about. And so we ask ourselves, how fast does it have to be moving for, for it to stick in the bucket? So what does that mean, stick in the bucket? And like I say, I often like to go out in space and think about this. If you're out in space, you have some water just hanging out there. And how do you make it stick in the bucket? Well, that means that the bucket must be pushing against the water, or the normal force must be greater than zero. And in order to make the bucket push against the water, you know, you'd in space, you'd have to be pulling with some tension, tension on the string. And so what's interesting then is if we look at this water, we know there's a force of gravity on it. And also, you must be pulling with some tension because there must be some normal force between the surface of the bucket and the water. So you've got a normal force that's greater than zero, and you also have the force of gravity. Okay, so we can put a condition on this now because we know... There are, there are no other forces, so the vector sum of the forces on the water must equal mass times acceleration of the water. And we recognize this is equal to mass times centripetal acceleration. And what is that? that I'm going to call this the positive direction because everything's you know being accelerated in that direction and the forces are in that direction. So that's just mg pushing down plus a normal force, which is greater than zero. Right? And because that's greater than zero, we know that this must be greater than only mg. Right? So the mass times acceleration must be greater than mg. Right? And we like the masses to cancel. And we say, oh, the acceleration must be greater than gravity. And the acceleration is v squared over r must be greater than gravity. And so the condition on how fast it's going would have to be v is greater than the square root of rg. And so we could estimate that. How about if this is a one meter string, this is equal to square root of one meter times 10 meters per second squared. And let's see, we got meters squared per second squared. We like it because a square root gives us meters per second. And the number, oh, 10. Well, 10 is a little more than nine. Uh, is uh, 3 squared. So this is a little bit more than 3. 3 meters per second. Right? And if this is 1 meter, then this is about 6 meters all the way around. And so that would be like 2 seconds. So if you imagine you're spinning a bucket, 1, 2, 1, about that fast to keep the water in. So just go try it out. See if that makes sense. But what if... What if we spin faster? If you spin much faster, then the centripetal acceleration goes up and you need more force. Ah, but that's okay because you've got a normal force here and you know what happens is the string gets tight and you push harder in order to accelerate that water downward. What if you slow down? Now it gets trickier. If velocity gets too low, your acceleration can't drop below gravity because gravity is coming from gravity. And so what happens is if this gets smaller, this gets smaller. Right? The radius gets smaller. And so this is what we see, you would notice, if you spun this slower, it would just, instead of accelerating about this radius, it would wind up going thump and accelerate about a smaller radius. And uh, you know, instead of going around this big circle, it would go around this little circle and right onto you making you, well, make it, maybe making you happy if you wanted to get wet.